Hello, Christina here. Welcome to day three of Stencil Month 2024. I'm going to be creating six backgrounds today using both stencils and watercolor, specifically uh, kind of like these pigment powder watercolors. I've got two different kinds today. So when I started out my creative session, I'm only going to be doing the backgrounds today. I'm not turning them into cards. I started out with a pile of stencils that I pulled from my stash. Some of these that you're seeing on camera are no longer available. Some are still being sold. Um, I will link to everything I use today down below. And if it's not available anymore, I'll link to something similar. The first stencil set I'm starting with is the Quilted Hearts coloring set from Waffle Flower. And the secret to using stencils with any like really wet medium like watercolor is pixie spray. Pixie spray is a low tack repositionable adhesive that was developed specifically for stencils. So what you do is you spray that all on the back of your stencil, let it dry for about a minute, and then you can stick it down to your project. I'm using some Strathmore watercolor paper, as well as two colors of Nouveau shimmer powder. Um, I've got, let's see, lilac waterfall and cherry bomb. I'm starting out by spraying my project here with the stencil on top. My spray bottle there that you just saw has, looks a little bit yellow, but that's just because it's old. I've had it for over a decade, so it's gotten lots of use sprayed my watercolor paper really well and then i'm tapping the bottles just to let out a little bit of powder and you can see that it really doesn't do much at this point and i learned later and as i moved along that's because there wasn't enough water sprayed onto my project before i applied the powder it's not a huge deal when that happens you can just bring in a wet brush and start moving that pigment around the minute the water hits that dry powder, it turns into a beautiful colored water and you can start painting with it. So I'm using a size eight round brush and just very gently moving that colored water around my stencil. And it was very, very watery at this point. So even though I did add the powder onto those areas to get a little more pigment, it's still very diluted. It's not really strong at this point. You'll see as I move along and play on more of these backgrounds that it really just depends on how you apply it to your project, whether you have a lot of water or a little bit of water. So I was worried about there being too much water on the top of the stencil when I removed the stencil. So I grabbed a paper towel and just kind of dabbed up quite a bit of that water. The trade-off with this is it also picks up some of that pigment on the areas where you wanted it. But when I removed the stencil, you can see those sharp edges around each of these hearts. And, you know, I was kind of worried because I could see some of the paint kind of seeping underneath the edges of the stencil. But all in all, it wasn't too bad. At this point, after I had dried those purple hearts, I then applied the second stencil in this layered set. So I brought that over, kind of lined that up and pressed it down really, really well. And then I did the same steps again. I sprayed it with my water bottle, trying to get a lot more water this time. And then I moved to the color Cherry Bomb and I added that on. You can see that there are some spots where the color starts moving around. And this is when I was reminded that, you know, if you've got a lot of water, that's what encourages the powder to start moving on its own. So then I brought my watercolor brush over and kind of spread that around. You can really see how pigmented and how much color there is in that powder when I just bring over a damp brush and it starts moving around. I did the same thing I did before by kind of pouncing a paper towel over the top since this stencil really didn't have a lot of openings on it. A lot of that water was just collecting on top of the stencil and I knew that lifting up the stencil before kind of sopping up some of the water would just result in a big mess. So that's why I stopped it up with the paper towel. You can see there are a few more spots where it seeped underneath. I attribute that to the amount of water I used. I hit that with my heat tool to speed along the drying process. And then just to kind of disguise some of those irregular edges, I decided to do some splatter um, just with the pigment powders. So I put a little tiny bit of that pigment on this acrylic block 
added some water with my damp brush and then flicked the paint off the edge of my acrylic block. This is my preferred method for paint splatter. I feel like I have a little more control over where it's going to go and I get less splatter drops all over my work surface. So that was my first background. We'll return to it later. I'm now trying Lindy's Magicals powders. I'm going to be using quite a few different colors today, and I'm also switching to a different brush. I'm using this small fan brush, which I find is really great for picking up these powders in the little pots. I'm using the Waves stencil from Simus S. Stamp, which I think has been discontinued. So I'll link to a few other stencils that are very similar. I sprayed the back of that stencil, let it dry for about a minute, and then pressed it down onto my watercolor paper. By the way, the watercolor paper I'm using today for all of my backgrounds is pre-cut 5x7 watercolor paper from Strathmore. Starting with this really pretty green color called Ponderosa, ooh, something green, I can't remember. And this other one is a very, very pretty teal. It's Tibetan poppy teal, and I think that teal color might be my most favorite color that I've ever used with these pigment powders. So as I start dropping the powder down onto this uh, background, you can see it's not moving very much in these areas because I didn't have much water. But there's one area down here at the bottom that it does start to move just a little bit. You can see it kind of creeping along the edges of the stencil. And that's when I thought to myself, ooh, I am really going to love this teal color. And you'll see me use it a few times in these backgrounds today. And every time I used it, I just loved it. So then I wet that fan brush and just very gently brushed this wet paint into the grooves of my stencil. I'm purposely kind of making the direction of my brush strokes the same direction as the stencil design because I don't want to you know encourage the paint to go underneath the edges of the stencil I'm just brushing it on really gently and then I decided that I liked some of those really intense dark spots with that teal powder so I'm actually going to pick up some of that teal powder with my brush and bring it over and deposit it in different areas and just specifically adding those dark spots. Okay, so I'm gonna lift off this stencil without using a paper towel, and I'm going to lift it in the direction of that stencil design, and you can see how sharp those edges are. I was really surprised how well this worked, and I really attribute that to a very even coating of that pixie spray on the back of my watercolor paper. Okay, for my next background, I'm using the Geo Leaves stencil from Simus a Stamp, and I actually learned a lot trying to work with this stencil. This is actually my second attempt with this stencil. I'm not showing you the first attempt, but I'm gonna tell you about it while we kind of experiment. So I'm using uh, some different colors now, and but that teal's coming back in, I love it. And basically what I learned when I attempted this the first time was that you really need to check and make sure the back of your stencil has an even coating of that pixie spray. In fact, if you're going to be using a water medium on top of the stencil, it probably would be best to even apply more pixie spray than you would normally apply. Generally, when I put pixie spray in the back of my stencils, it's going to stick down to the surface without a problem, probably because I'm using it on top of a smooth cardstock. However, watercolor paper is actually quite textured, so you need some additional adhesive to kind of really stick it down, especially if you've done any kind of watercoloring underneath, which I'm going to show you right now. The next three backgrounds are all made using the animal print stencil set from Simon. There are three stencils in this set. This is actually one of the sets that I designed for Simon. We've got a cheetah print, a zebra, and a giraffe. I'm going to start with the zebra print and use the storm cloud nouveau shimmer drops or shimmer powder drops. I'm putting a little bit of that dark gray powder on my acrylic block wetting my background and then I'm going to do a very faint layer of watercolor underneath all of my stenciling. So I first brought in just a little bit of this gray shade and it is very diluted. It's very faint. I wanted a little more than that. So then I brought in that powder and just popped it down right onto this very wet piece of paper. And you can see that it starts to wick out. 
I sprayed even more water to get those colors moving. And then as I lift up my hardboard and move things around, it encourages the color to really spread across that watercolor paper. I love this very organic look. And I had a couple spots where the powder had kind of glopped up on my paper. So I just used a brush to kind of add more water just to that area so it would start moving around. I dried that completely. And then now I'm going to go in with my stencil. I'm using the zebra stencil, so I'm placing that directly on top and pressing it down really well onto the watercolor paper. I then once again used my spray bottle to spray that whole area really, really well. And then I dropped in more of that powder. You can really see how it's starting to move a little bit more because now I'm applying more water before I put the powder on. Like I did before, I'm using my fan brush and just gently encouraging that paint to start moving within the grooves of the stencil design. And just like I did before, there were some areas that I wanted to have a little more color. So I came in with more of that uh, powder and just added more until I could get it to the darkness where I, where I wanted it. Spread that out. And then I'm going to very carefully peel up my stencil and I'm going to pull it with sort of the direction of the stencil design. So I'm peeling it up and I have this really sharp zebra pattern. It so blows my mind that more watercolor doesn't creep under the edges of the stencil. If you get more of the watercolor creeping under your stencil, you need more pixie spray on the back of your stencil. I'm now using my fine tech pearlescent paints and I'm going to be using black and sort of this gun metal shade to do some more paint splatter on top. This looks really, really cool. In fact, you really won't see exactly what it looks like until everything's dry because when this pearlescent powder is wet, it doesn't really have any of that shine to it. You can see it a little bit, but not as brightly as you will once it's dry. So I splattered on that black and then I splattered on that gunmetal shade as well, just trying to get it in those different areas. And it really disguises any of those areas where the paint may have creeped underneath the stencil. All right, I'm gonna move on to my fifth background. And now I'm gonna change colors and I'm gonna use kind of like an orangey color and what looked like a brown to me. Um, but you're gonna see that that brown color is actually more of a red. It's labeled copper, which that should have like clued me in, but I started by doing a background color and I thought it would be like a faint brown, but it turns out that it looks kind of pink. It looks a little bit more salmon colored than brown. Not my ideal color choice, but it still looked really neat once I was done. So I decided to just go with it. So I added more and more of that pigment until I got it to about the shade where I liked it. I hit it with my heat tool until everything was dry and then applied my giraffe stencil. So I'm pressing that down really, really well, making sure all those areas, if you see any areas of your stencil kind of popping up from the surface of the watercolor paper, remove it from your project and add more pixie spray. So now I'm dropping on the more orangey color and then I'm gonna drop on some of that copper and you can see that it doesn't really start moving much until I come in with my wet brush and start kind of adding that moisture to different areas. This one was really, really fun because it really played up the different colors of pigment in each one of the powders. Over here, I'm getting a lot of copper and that like golden orange color. But as I start moving my brush around, there's one area from the orange shade that had a lot of black or green in it. Isn't that so interesting? It just looks so different. And I got really organic colors by using pigment powders. I think it looks really, really, really neat. So I'm only using two different types of pigment powders today, but there are quite a few different brands out there that you could try. I'm pretty sure all of them kind of function the same way. They just have different methods. A lot of them come in these little jars. Um, the only ones I've seen in these little bottles are the Nouveau shimmer powders, but I think Lindy's also has some that are in bottles, although I don't have them myself. So after I dried all of my watercolor, it does kind of dull down just a little bit. I then came in with more of that fine tech paint. You can see the shimmer on this. It's actually really, really pretty. So I'm using 
uh, I think three different colors of my fine text. I've got this red shade and then I'm going to do that orange kind of an orangey red shade just to kind of mimic the colors that are on my background already and then I'm going to come in with gold and there's not a lot of gold on the background right now but it's kind of had that really warm feel to it so I thought this champagne gold color would be beautiful on top and it worked out great so I'm going to set this aside to dry and create my last background which happens to be my favorite I think the more backgrounds I did I just learned more about the paints and the the pigment powders and how far I could push them so I'm using a red a purple and that teal starting out with an under layer and I'm going to be applying these powders with my fan brush I'm wiping off my fan brush so it's as dry as possible so that the powders will really fall off the brush so this is where the magic comes in <laughs> look at this this is what happens when you have lots of water on your watercolor paper so if you drop your pigment powder onto your project and you're not getting these like fireworks burst burst kind of happening you just need to add more water to your initial beginning so I'm uh, dropping these powders on in all the different shades I love this teal oh it's so pretty I love how it just spreads out then take your spray bottle and spray additional water onto these areas and you'll get the colors moving even more I'm going to lift up my hardboard and really encourage those colors to move around and blend. There's a lot of water on here. So have your paper towel ready when you try this because there's so much water that it's going to kind of run off to the edges of your project. And unfortunately, this is just one of those things that happens when you have that much water on your project and you really need that much water to get these pigments moving. For the areas where the powder was all collected and clumped, I came in with my paintbrush to really move those around, and then I used my heat tool to speed along the drying process. So here's what it looks like completely dry. It looks really, really cool, and there's a shimmer to it that you just can't see on camera. I'm applying my cheetah stencil to this. This whole color palette and the pattern completely reminds me of Lisa Frank. Please tell me there are some 80s babies out there who also remember Lisa Frank. I just, I think it's amazing. The colors remind me of Lisa Frank, but I think if I was really mimicking a Lisa Frank look, I probably would have used like a hot pink and more neon shades and probably a bright yellow in there somewhere. So I came in with the, my three shades and just brushed them on this time. I didn't even, didn't even, you know, spray it first and then apply the color. I decided to just go ahead and paint them on as is. And that really helped me get the more full strength of color with all of these shades. It makes for a really dramatic background and it looks so neat once I pull off that stencil. I love the overlapping of colors on this. It's just really cool. I'm hitting that with my heat tool and then I'm going to come in with a few different shades of that fine tech pearlescent paint. Starting out with this teal shade and splattering some of that teal on and then I'm going to grab the purple and do the same. I didn't splatter on as much purple because it doesn't didn't quite look like it, it needed it. It came on came on kind of dark. It wasn't really bright. And then I used this white pearl shade and just adding that brightness of the white pearl really lightens up the entire background. I think it turned out so so neat. Of all six backgrounds, this was my favorite. And I think it's because I really played with the medium and learned what I could do and how I could push it. So don't be afraid to do that. I was planning to make these into cards, but like I said, I just ended up doing a bunch of backgrounds because every time I did one, it just got better and better and better. And now I have a lot of different backgrounds to work with later to make some fun cards. So here are all six backgrounds. They turned out so fun. And look at the shimmer. And once it's dry, how it really kind of glows. It looks really, really neat. You can see the shimmer really well on my wave background. I love how the, the dark to light really gets that wicking look and I'm going to hold it up close to the camera and you can really see that shimmer. It's subtle unless you're right in person and can see what's happening. Here's the shimmer on my giraffe background. I think the, the combination of the fine tech splatters plus that shimmer from the powders, is just really beautiful. 
So here is a close-up look at all six patterns. Um, I wanted to show you the complete backgrounds with it kind of angled in the light so you could see a little bit of that shimmer and the glow. All of them turned out really, really well, and I'm excited to turn these into cards. Um, I'm not sure if I'll share them online when they're finished. These might sit in my craft room for a bit until the right moment comes along, but they all turned out beautiful. Everything I've used today is listed down below in the video description in the supply list. Um, like I said, if the stencil I used was discontinued, I'll link to something that has a similar look. Thanks for joining me today, and I will see you on Monday for another live stream. I'll be back live on YouTube at 6 p.m. Mountain Time on Monday. See you then.